Hey guys, this is Robert Daly with the Daily Woodworks YouTube channel and the RecreationalWoodworker.com where we help you build great furniture. And today I'm going to show off some new to toys, tools that I got from Makita. Now, this is 100%. I bought this with my own money. I'm not affiliated with Makita. I'm not affiliated with the store I bought this from. Paid full price for this. This is my tool. So, my opinions are my own. I've had this guy for about two weeks now and been using it in the shop and very happy with this kit. So let me bring you in closer so we can really look at what I got and give you some buying exact uh, give you some buying advice as we head into the holiday season for buying your tools. So if you didn't already know, this is the Makita subcompact impact driver and subcompact drill driver. This is the kit that I got, and here's the buying advice for you. I'm not going to try to hold that to the end or something like that. Is when you're shopping for your drills and tools, check out different stores and different places to buy the tool that you're looking for, and really scroll through the options. So as I was looking, this kit with two batteries and the charger is $229 at the time of recording um, before hyperinflation sets in. I was looking around, clicking through the options, and it was like free uh, impact sockets and free bit set included in some type of different package with this same price. So I essentially got these um, Makita bits and this little socket set for free. I did not need this at all, really didn't need the bits, but again, they were free and they're about $20 a piece. So this is about $20, $40 of free free tools that I got in the package. Um, so be aware of that. So first thing is, is it comes with a case. It doesn't come with your modular storage box or whatever. I'm not gonna use this, but it feels like a pretty darn good quality little case. So if you did wanna keep them in this case, you could definitely do that. Um, it's got some good dividers in here, not really padded. It does have some, probably like some type of cardboard padding on the outside. Um, I think this would make an excellent lunch box actually, so that's probably what I'm going to keep and use it for whenever we do family outings. Pack a lunch in there, nice little cube shape, easy to stack, easy to store, um, but that's the case. This is my water. Now I haven't used these at all. They're apparently impact rated sockets, they are SAE which is standard, freedom units, whatever you want to call it. Um, haven't used these at all, so I can't tell you if they're good quality or bad quality, but to be honest, I do so little mechanical type of work that, I mean, a Harbor Freight socket's going to be completely perfect for any usage that I ever do. So I'm sure these are perfectly adequate. Now these bits are the, oh, I forget what Makita's new fancy name is for their impact rated bits. But I will tell you that these bits are pretty darn good. Um, like, I really liked using them. I don't know where my... I already lost the uh, bit holder, but let me go find that and then kind of show you the bits a little bit more before I dive into the impact and the drill. All right, let's zoom in here close and check out these bits. First, these are pretty good-looking bits. Um, they say Makita on them. This is like some type of tape that's probably going to come off with use. Um, but I've really enjoyed these bits and normally I'm not a person who really cares about bits. I'll just buy the cheap little package and then use them. And honestly, I don't ever need to buy bits again because I have a drawer full. I just need to really organize it. But again, this was free and included it. Standard quarter inch hex shank, just an overall good looking bit and they fit very good. I've actually noticed like, Hey, these are really, these are really nice bits. This case is your just generic plastic case. There's nothing wrong with it at all, but there's also nothing incredibly special about it. I do like this little pivoting guy, so it like pivots up so you can get your bits in and out easy. That's nice. Um, I might customize this later to uh, be in my tool bag that I take everywhere. What I'm particularly like, good job Makita on this on is the bit holder. You know, most of these little bit holders you put a screw in, um, Torx and square heads are particularly bad about it, but the, the head of the, the bit will get kind of jammed in the screw and then it'll get like stuck there. Um, 
this has a really not only does it have a magnet but it's got a little snap ring in there that grabs onto the top of the bit let's see if you can hear that So I had to do that on the back of the mic, but it takes a good bit of pulling to pull that out of there. It's, you can see it's pretty well in there. It's in there. I mean, you know, a good tug gets it out of there, but a good snap to lock that in there. That I'm very impressed with, and it's a good low profile bit holder. So yeah, good, good, good to go there. The free little kit includes, you know, your standard Phillips, um, squares, torques, and a couple of flats, and then a couple of uh, nut drivers and a little adapter. So everything we need here in North America. Now for the meat and potatoes of this uh, little discussion is the Makita Brushless Subcompact Impact Driver and the Makita Brushless Subcompact Drill Driver. This is not a hammer drill. Um, yeah, so let's dive into this guy first and what the kit came with. One, it came with these freebies, but the kit itself came with two two amp hour batteries. And then a uh, Makita charger. Um, I don't know where... Yeah, I've got lots of Makita chargers. Um, I've got one in the shop that I use that's a dual charger. It charges two batteries at once. I've got one in my trailer. I've got one in my truck. And I think I have one extra because I just find good deals on combo kits and ended up buying, having lots of Makita batteries. That's kind of how I've done it. Now, I'm a little bit confused on this. And um, Philly Fixed did a really good video comparing like apparently the old version and new version of these. Um, and basically was like, they're essentially exactly the same um, with, you know, a mind like a 16th size difference and a little bit of different RPM ratings. Um, I will link to his video because he did a good job on that. Um, but I believe I bought the old ones, which might be why I got the little freebies is because they were trying to clear out old stock. But if you have the opportunity, buy the old ones because it includes the 2 amp hour batteries instead of the 1.5 amp batteries for the same price. So be aware of that um what this guy just so you know this is model number xdt15 i think the new one is xdt18 if i remember that right um the drill is xfd11 um so let's dive into which one we do want to do first let's do the drill first all right this drill First, it feels good in the hand. Um, this isn't going to be one of those like how many battery, how many screws can we run kind of things. It's just like the battery lasts sufficiently long. It's got lots of power. Um, this guy feels wonderful in my hand. Um, five, ten, and I've got kind of short, stubby fingers. Um, this guy fits great, feels great, extremely well balanced, nice lightweight. I love the lightweight of this. It does have a plastic chuck, but again, you're not using this as a hammer drill. You're not, I mean, I've got my big old Makita drill to do the big boy stuff. This is for drilling out some holes, for installing drawer handles, drawer pulls, things like that. Um, I did drill an inch and a quarter hole with the Forstner bit. It struggled a little bit on that, but it got it done in sufficient, I'm completely happy, speed, time, and effort. Obviously, my big Makita drill will get through that a lot quicker. Let me go grab that big drill so we can see the size difference. So this is my big boy Makita brushless hammer drill. This guy is an absolute beast. It will hurt you if you're not careful. But you can see the size difference right here is we're about two inches shorter or yeah two inches shorter wait yeah shorter and then the length so i guess it's also about two inches shorter i don't know if you can see that very well from the base of the chuck so smaller and then the r diameter is also a lot smaller so you can see this is your big boy this will do anything you need it to do but if i'm holding a screw gun above my head all day drilling holes installing cabinet pools things like that this guy is way better. The grips, 
on both are good. Um, this one does have a, looks like a little bit smaller grip on it, but no quality or no real difference. Okay, so that's the size difference here. Um, yeah, so again, I drilled an inch and a quarter Forstner bit in solid beach. No problem with this. Um, I could tell it did work harder than this big old boy, but it did what I needed it to do. And then you have your impact driver. For the impact driver, um, my one gripe about this is, and you'll see this in all the videos, is it doesn't have the quick adjust chuck. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you something. This is a three. This is a half inch uh, chuck in here, so you can put a half inch bit in here, no problem, and it will handle it. That I really appreciate. Um, so my other small drill that I use for installations only goes up to three eighths. It's rarely a problem, but when it's a problem, it's a problem and makes it where I have to always carry this drill. For smaller installation jobs, this drill could do everything I would ever need it to do. Um, so that half inch chuck is very nice and it holds, I know we're going out of order here. It ratchets up nice and tight and the run out on this is not bad. Um, it's, I'm not going to do like a super scientific thing, but when you put a drill bit in there on a cheap drill, you can see that the bit wobbles a little bit on this, the bit wobbles very, very little. Okay. So this guy, two speed, the one gripe I have about it is this, ah, no, it doesn't go in. You have to pull the collet out to insert it. Um, by contrast, Every other impact I have, and then the Fez tool that I sold, I wish I would have got this before I sold the other, um, so I could really compare those two. But this is my handy dandy, trusted, tried and true, five, six, seven year old rigid Gen 5X impact driver. You can see that again, the size difference here and the weight difference is oh boy. Um, but this guy, the collet is quick connect, it snaps in, and then the cool thing about the rigid is. Ah, it'll shoot it out whenever you're done. So that's super handy when dealing with hot bits. This one doesn't have it. Is it a huge deal breaker? Maybe it is for you. For me, it's not. It's frustrating. I feel like this should have it, especially since this is the older, cheaper rigid. That I mean, it's already discontinued. They've moved on to newer and better models. Like this still has brushed motors in it. Um, that's really my only gripe about it. It has two speeds. It's got a... I'm going to go with a hard and a soft. So you've got, and an assist mode. So you got high speed is both lights. Slow speed. And then assist mode. The way assist works is pretty cool. Let me find something I can screw into. All right, here's one of those tests that I said I wasn't going to do. Um, now, this isn't going to be like, Obviously, this is a more powerful impact driver. This is the my partner's uh, DeWalt XR brushless impact driver. You can see this guy has held up phenomenally to lots of use, lots of abuse. Great impact driver, nothing faulting. This is just show you, I guess, some of the differences because you'll be perfectly happy with either of these. But here's what we got. We have a brand new Torx bit. Put that in again even this DeWalt does the thing where it locks in and the DeWalt ejects it so I like that call it better but let me just show you the difference as this is white oak some Javier which is about the hardest of maple and some um, mahogany scrap I have laying around your clamp down so it doesn't twist out on me but I'm going to put this in speed one And you can see it pretty much stalls out. It just doesn't have the torque in speed one to do the job. So now I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to put that in speed two. What we have found with this guy, with most of the stuff we do in the shop, speed two is about right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this screw in with speed two. So you can see with speed two, a lot faster. 
goes in nice and good. Speed three is whenever you're really in a hurry. And again, works really good. Um, my rigid is about the same way. It's got a switch on top. I actually like the tactile switch better. Um, but let me grab our bit. We're just using the same exact bit for all of them because I didn't want to dig out three different bits. T25, new hole. You can see speed one really doesn't do the job. Speed two. Faster, that's kind of used this in speed two most of the time inside the shop for what we need to do. Speed three is fast. So really pretty comparable to the DeWalt on usage. Now let's look at this guy. So we're going to start with putting in the bit, which is the frustrating part about this tool. And we're going to put it in soft or slow. It's H and S, so I'm not sure which is which. So new hole. <laughs> You can see the soft doesn't, it kind of stalls out like the other one does, but what I've noticed is the soft is, it hits a little bit harder or it spins a little bit faster. It feels like I have more control with the soft than I do on the other twos, two of them. And then we have high, so let me go ahead and pull this out and do a new, a new hole. So you can see that sunk a three inch deck screw, no problem. Now, which one does it better faster? I don't care about that. What I care about is it sunk a screw, no problem, because I install cabinetry and I like these big three inch deck screws to mount my cabinets and my cleats to my studs to get really hard, uh, really solid connection. And you take it out. And then this also has an assist mode, which I don't know, I don't have a huge opinion of yet. I haven't really played with it enough to know how much I like it. But listen, it starts off... It starts off slow and then speeds up, which is kind of weird. And those are going to be hot now. Um, now I'm going to switch over to the drill. We, we know this drill is going to do it. Um, but I want to show you one thing that might be causing me to sell another Fez tool tool. This is the Fez tool CXS. This is a 10.8 or 12 volt tool. Obviously, these are not apples and apples. And I'm going to compare these more in an in-depth video. Not because these are truly comparable tools, but the intended use for these is about the same which is how I use them and why I'm really thinking about getting rid of this guy now. So I do installations over my cabinetry. I don't need a lot of tools. Today I went and did an install. I had my T-Stacks loaded up and I took these two drills were the only drills I have. I do not feel confident making this the only drill I have on site. I would want this as backup. With these two, I don't feel this way. With this, I could do everything I need to do. So the cool thing about this, it has the interchangeable chucks. It's phenomenal hand, it's a great tool, but let's see if it can sink a three inch screw. Again, for installing those cabinets. Ha, that's kind of hot. Should I use a new screw just so people don't tell me I'm cheating? Yeah. So I do have it in high speed and um, in drill mode. And that's when it cuts out. So I'm gonna put it in one now. Okay, so it did it. You can see it's struggling. I got it finally below flush. Okay, this dude, again, will be fair. I'll put it in that and then high speed. And now I need to put it in low. And I could sink it about a half inch into that oak. So 
that right there is kind of why this one's not cutting it for me anymore. When this one could do everything I need it to do. I heard why are you, you playing? I, you should be working. This YouTube be, is my job. Rebar. YouTube is this my job. I have rebar in YouTube it. is my job. What the heck, Robert? Shut up. <laughs> Don't tell him I was using his drill. <laughs> I really was. I know. That's it. <laughs> It's hard to sneak up on anybody when you have a ridiculously loud truck. I can still stab you. You had your back turned. I trust you. All right, so thanks for watching the review of these two guys, uh, the Makita Subcompact uh, Drill and Driver Combo. Um, overall, I really like these guys. Um, I was looking for something smaller and lighter to put in my go bag that I always have with me, always do. Most of the time, the big hammer drill is too big for what I need. The big heavy duty impact driver is too big and heavy for what I need. Something that's just super light in the hand, feels great. I like this dude, but has the power that I really need it to have to do what I need to do and not have to worry about, am I gonna have enough tool with me? These guys fit that bill. They feel great in the hand, battery life is good, power is sufficient. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend buy it. If you do buy it, um, check out all the different different places that sell these things because we're getting into holidays. They have different combo kits available and maybe you'll get yourself some free bits or free battery or free something extra if you really kind of dive into the options before you just click buy. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. And if, yeah. So see you later.